Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dr. Kajal Chindal from University of Delhi. Today we are going to discuss about the module Confocal Microscopy from the paper Characterization of Materials 1. So students, let us see what we are going to learn in this module. In this module, principle and working of confocal microscope is described. Then, the various types of confocal microscopes are discussed. Sample preparation for confocal microscopy is described. Also, in this module, the advantages, disadvantages and applications of confocal microscopy are studied. Let us begin with the understanding of confocal microscopy. Confocal microscopes produce sharp images of an object which would appear blurred in the conventional microscopes. Confocal microscopes only include the light from the object which is from microscopes focal plane thereby excluding most of the light coming from the object. The obtained images have less haze along with better contrast than achievable by the normal microscopes and they represent a fine cross-section of the object. Therefore, in addition to better observation of fine details, this technique also allows to build three-dimensional reconstructions of a volume of the object by accumulating a series of thin slices taken along the vertical axis. Marvin Minsky discovered the basic idea of confocal microscopy in mid-1950s while working at Harvard University. Approximately 10 years later, Egger and Petron developed a spinning disc multiple beam confocal microscope. They employed this technique to examine unstrained brain sections and ganglion cells. Working in this field, Egger developed earliest mechanically scanned confocal laser microscope and took first recognizable images of cells in 1973. Scanning confocal microscope was devised by G. Fred Brickenhoff in 1979. By providing explanation for image formation, Colin Shepard greatly contributed to the development of the technique. Confocal microscope equipment was first commercialized in 1987. Let us discuss the principle and working of confocal microscopes. Confocal microscopes work by exciting the fluorescent labels which are present in a specimen. The excitation is provided by lasers as against the use of mercury and xenon lamps in standard epifluorescence technique. The laser beam is focused onto a point and then scanned across the specimen in a point by point or line by line manner and the emitted fluorescent light at each scan point is collected by an objective. The schematics of the optical path and the principal components of a laser scanning confocal microscope is shown in figure. We can see that the collected fluorescent light is then passed through an aperture and a photomultiplier tube or PMT which detects it. Subsequently, a pixel containing appropriate brightness 
is stored in the memory and it is displayed on a display screen. For example, the monitor. Pixels forms an image leading to 256 kilobyte of image size. Iris or pinhole is crucial to confocal effect. It is a controllable aperture which avoids the detection of out of focus light by PFT. Thus, only a thin piece of the sample is imaged. Such a piece or slice of sample is often termed as an optical section. The iris controls the resolution and brightness of the image such that a closer of iris results in a thin optical slice and better resolution. Whereas when iris is opened, it results in a thick slice and increases image brightness. By eliminating the signals from out of focus plane, confocal fluorescence microscopes achieve true three dimensional resolution. Achieve this, iris or a pinhole is used in front of detector. This is also shown in the figure. The function of iris is to pass the light coming from in focus plane and to block the light which is coming from out of focus planes. Confocal means having same focus. A point like light source, generally a laser is used. This point source is derived by passing the light through a pinhole, which can be conveniently achieved by using a fiber optic connector. This is directed to the specimen through a beam splitter and an objective which illuminates a spot. The point of illumination can be moved across the sample by a scanner and there are several ways by which this can be done. The fluorescence light emitted from the sample generally passes from the detecting pinhole and forms a point-like image on the detector. Sample spot and detector pinhole are optically conjugated together, thus giving the confocal microscope. The confocal microscope is therefore a confocal scanning optical microscope. The optical sectioning aspect is the most important advantage of confocal microscope. The sections can be as thin as the wavelength of light and its spatial resolution of microscope is the best that can be achieved by using optical microscopy. Collecting the imaging involves the scanning of light. The simplest approach would be to move the sample as the optical system is optimized. The other approach is to have a set of two mirrors of two mirrors to scan the laser in the XY plane by first doing an X scan and then making a Y shift, then an X scan again, and so on. The laser beam itself can be split into several smaller beams, and all the beams may be simultaneously used for imaging. In this way, each beam needs to be moved only for a short distance for imaging the entire sample. All the beams are focused by the objective simultaneously and the light coming out from the sample is collected through the pinholes and micro lenses detected parallel. The holes can be arranged in a spiral fashion so that the entire space can be scanned 
by rotating the disc. Increasing the speed of rotation will increase the speed of imaging. The signal collected from the sample is confined to specific illumination volume by the use of an aperture. Thus, the aperture sits at the same focal point of the objective, rejecting all light that comes from other regions. This facilitates localization of the illumination volume. Thus, direct localization of the illumination volume smaller than the resolution of light microscopy is possible in the confocal technique. Let us discuss about the advantages of confocal microscopy. Firstly, the field depth can be controlled. Secondly, the principal advantage of confocal microscopy is the image contrast, which is achieved by rejecting the light that comes from other focal planes of the sample. These signals, if not eliminated, degrade the obtained image. For this purpose, a slit is used such that the smaller the slit, larger is the rejection, but the overall signal quality decreases in this way. Also, by using optical sexting, this technique avoids artifacts occurring while physical sectioning and fluorescent staining of samples such as tissues as employed in conventional microscopes. Also, serial optical sections can be collected from thick samples using confocal microscopy. By reducing background fluorescence and improved signal to noise ratio, the contrast and definition are greatly enhanced in comparison to wide field technique. Owing to the non invasive nature, of optical sectioning, this technique can be used to examine living as well as fixed samples in several different conditions with improved clarity. The magnification can be adjusted electronically only by tuning the area scanned by the laser and it does not require any change in objective. Are shown in figures B, D, and F. Hippocampus thick section, which is treated with primary antibodies to glial fibrillary acidic protein, that is GFAP rich. Neurofilaments H, which are green, in counter stained with Hughes triple three four two blue to highlight nuclei. C and D, thick section of rat, smooth muscle, stained with phyllodin, conjugated to elixir floor 568, where the targeting action is red, weak germ, agglutinin, conjugated to organ, green 488, that is glycoproteins, is green and counter stain with DREQ5, which is the nuclei and blue in color. In figures E and F, sunflower pollen grain tetrad autofluorescence are shown. We will next discuss the various types of confocal microscopes. There are three types of confocal microscopes. First one is the confocal laser scanning microscopes. A pair of mirrors is used across the fixed iris or pinhole and detector for scanning the laser across the specimen as well as for de-scanning the image. A separate mirror is used 
for x axis and y axis. Second is the spinning disc or Nipko disc confocal microscopes. Here, in this microscope, a series of moving irises or pinholes on a disc are used to scan a spot of light. The third one is the programmable array microscopes. Here, the spatial light modulator is used to produce a set of moving irises or pinholes. The light modulator can be controlled electronically. Actually, results fixation and extraction technique used in traditional fluorescence microscopes usually result in flattening of specimens, especially by the weight of copper slip. Fixation and dehydration protocols also introduce distortional artifacts. Hence, samples for three-dimensional imaging should be prepared very cautiously. An important consideration in such imaging is how far the sample can be focused along its z-axis since the focusing of sample along z-axis causes great loss in contrast and often results in shadowing effects. This leads to a differential brightness in vertical direction of the image which is obtained such that focal planes lying at the top appear brighter than those lying at the bottom. This can be avoided by increasing the intensity of illumination. However, an increase in illumination intensity also increases photo bleaching of the specimen. As well as emitted fluorescence can be attenuated by features which are located between the focal plane of interest and the object. This causes self-shadowing of structures and considerably reduces the contrast of image in some areas of the specimen. Functional behavior of dental tissues towards slow-moving cutting instruments, such as emulating trisals, as well as high-speed instruments, example, rotary burrs, air-propelled abrasive particles, soft powder slurries, etc. have been examined by confocal microscopy. Non-destructive imaging of plaques is possible by confocal laser scanning microscopy, that is CLSM. This is done by using a vitality staining approach to characterize the immediate bactericidal effect of chlorhexidine CHX on biofilm, thereby visualizing and quantifying the biofilm left on the substrate on which it was grown after treatment with antimicrobial agent. Determining the localization of ions, macromolecules, proteins, RNA, etc., cytoskeletal elements, organelles, etc., within the cells. Then, by tracing particular cells or structures through a tissue. Producing optical sections for stereo image production, three dimensional reconstruction, and four dimensional imaging. Now, coming on to the disadvantages of confocal microscope. The first one is that the intensity of laser beam can damage the living cells. Thus, laser light must be aptly attenuated before applying on the sample. Secondly, depending on the setup, A can be over 10 times the price of a typical conventional fluorescence light microscope. Third, 
depending on the setup, it can be over 10 times the price of the typical conventional fluorescence light microscope. Another disadvantage of confocal microscope systems is that they often take larger space than traditional fluorescence microscopes as additional space is required for laser, scan head and computer hardware. And such other objects are made to interact with cells, bacteria, viruses, etc. Secondly, the penetration behavior of various restorative materials can be studied under confocal microscopes. Resin infiltration of natural caries lesions has been examined by confocal microscope as well as transverse microradiographs. The results obtained indicated towards lower penetration depth of adhesive than the infiltrate. Present day anti candida therapy, particularly for superficial infections which can respond towards elimination. So, students, let us now summarize what we have learned in this module. In this module, the principle and working of confocal microscope was described. The various types of confocal microscopes were discussed. Also, the sample preparation for confocal microscopy was described. Moreover, the advantages, disadvantages and applications of confocal microscopy were studied. Thank you students for your attention.